Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. I've been doing deep sky astrophotography for over a year now with some pretty nice results. In this video I wanted to talk about the astro modification for your DSLR camera and help you in the decision if you should get a modified camera or not. In this video I will talk about what the astro mod actually is, when you should use it, if you should get a modified camera and if yes, how should you do it? Should you modify your camera yourself or buy one in the next store? In the end I will talk about a filter used for modified cameras and of course my conclusion, my final thoughts on this topic. So let's get started. If you look at the night sky, there are three cone wavelengths you want to capture to get the best images possible. First we have hydrogen glow, H-alpha, glowing at about 656 nanometers. The second, sulfur, S2, at 672 nanometers, I believe. And at last, oxygen-3, commonly found in supernova remnants, glowing blue at about 500 nanometers wavelength. If you look at the transmission chart for a DSLR camera, you will see that there is no problem with oxygen, because 500 nanometers, every camera can capture the blue of the sky, for example. So, no problem with that. But if you look over to the right, you will see that there is a big problem with hydrogen alpha and S2. The transmission for H alpha is not even a quarter of the possible, and even less for S2. This is due to the infrared filter, the IR cut filter, in your DSLR camera. The infrared filter is used to get the right white balance during the day, but it's really annoying if you want to do astrophotography. So what is the astrophotographer doing? Removing the IR cut filter from the camera. After the filter has been removed, the transmission for H alpha and S2 will be much higher and you will be able to see much more of the night sky. There are many popular types of astrophotography, but you don't need the modification for most of them. Let me give you a small list. Do you need the astro modification for wide field Milky Way shots? No, you don't. Do you need it to photograph the moon? No, you don't. Do you need the astromod for star trails or time-lapse videos? No, you don't. But do you need the modification to capture nebulae, galaxies, star clusters? Yes, you do. If you shoot deep sky, you will need the astro modification, because the best deep sky objects out there are hydrogen nebulae, beautiful giant red glowing clouds. And if you get the other two wavelengths in there with narrowband filters, you can produce wonderful false color Hubble palette images, which are looking amazing. But with a stock DSLR with the IR cut filter inside, you will be disappointed. Wide field moon, star trails, time lapse. Wide field moon, star trails. If you shoot wide field moon, <laughs> if you shoot wide field moon, star trails, time lapse. You won't need the astro modification. A good camera is everything you need to get great pictures. But for deep sky, you will need a DSLR that is astro modified. But be careful, if you are new to this hobby, if you just want to get into it to try it out to see if you like it, don't modify your camera. If you have a small tracking mount with a zoom lens on top of it, don't modify your camera. The problem is, if you get into astro photography over the normal daytime photography, you won't be able to use your camera anymore for these normal daytime shots. This transition is a big step and I really understand that some people are afraid to do it. So if you just want to get into this hobby to see if you like it, to see if it's something for you you might enjoy, don't modify your camera. But if you have a dedicated deep sky setup, a large tracking mount, laptop, telescope, auto guiding, yes you will need the astro modification because the pictures you can get with this setup are amazing. This question is very simple to answer, because there are only two options. You can either modify the camera you have at home, or buy a new one in the next store. The pros and cons of buying a modified camera. The modified cameras you can buy are way more expensive, they cost about $200 more. The good thing, the warranty on your product will probably still be there, because some of the manufacturers are really certified by Canon or Nikon, for example, to do the modification. So a good warranty on your camera, if something breaks, always very handy. And another good point, you don't have the risk of getting a broken camera, because these cameras will work. If you modify your camera yourself, the pros. 
There's no extra cost, you just have to pay for the camera or maybe you even have your camera at home and you can do that without any extra money. If you don't know how to do the modification, there are plenty of YouTube tutorials around for Canon cameras. I didn't find any for Nikon yet, I'm sorry. But you can just Google it. There are many tutorials on how to modify a Canon camera. But the cons of this endeavor. It's a very complicated and time-consuming task. If you're modifying a camera for the first time, there's always a risk to break the whole thing. And that's for a medium-level camera, $600 out the window. And another bad point, the warranty on the camera will be gone. <coughs> I have a Canon ES 750DA, as you modified. I did not modify this one myself, because I didn't want to take the risk to break this. I think it was 750 euro camera. But if you're sure that you're up to the task to disassemble the whole camera, and to reassemble it without the iro cut filter inside, there's really no point against the modification done by yourself. This next topic probably the most interesting one, I think. So you've modified your camera and now you can't use it for normal daytime photography anymore. Or can you? As I was browsing astronomical filters, I stumbled over a filter called an over-wide balance filter. These filters are made for astro-modified cameras to get the correct white balance right back. I found this filter in the Canon EOS clip version, so you just clip them into the body of your camera and your normal camera will be back. It sounds very much like irony to get a modified camera or to disassemble your camera to take the iro cut filter out only to get a new filter to clip it inside for about another $200. But if money is not an issue for you, I really recommend thinking about this option. Because if you have only one camera for day and night, with this filter you can do both. Just one warning, if you have this filter you won't be able to use the normal Canon EF-S lenses for your camera. The normal EF lenses are fine and the L objectives of course, but the small EFS lenses, they are not suitable for this filter. So with the normal lens I have on there right now, I wouldn't be able to use it. I would have to use my Samyang 40mm objective because this is not an S lens. Well, to sum things up, if you really want to get into deep sky astrophotography, if you have your dedicated setup, large tracking mount, telescope, auto guiding, modify your camera. The pictures you are getting are so much better. If you just want to try it out and have a small setup, I really don't recommend it, it's not worth. And if you are afraid to do the step, you have the over white balance filter to use your camera in the night and in the day and you will be able to see much more deep sky wonders. Well, that's all I have to say. I hope that in the next nights there will be some clear ones, but... The usual sound I hear when I wake up or go to sleep is this. So I'm looking at the weather radars every day, trying to get a clear night, because I've got so many new things I want to try out. First of all, I have this small body here. Always fun. And also I recently got the 6 inch tongue twister over there. And you will see these two guys in the next videos if I get some clear nights. On that note, clear nights, clear skies. See you next time.